From downtown Spokane, this is 4 News Now, Special Edition. Good evening. Thanks for joining us on this special edition of 4 News Now. I'm Rob King. Jordan Smith has the night off. Well, our team of weather experts has declared tomorrow a weather alert day. Meteorologist Matt Gray joins us right away with what you need to know about Sunday's forecast. And Rob, this is going to be a reminder that even though temperatures are cooling down, fire season is not over yet in the inland northwest. So we've got a fire weather warning up for most of eastern Washington, a good chunk of the Idaho Panhandle for Sunday. And we have declared tomorrow a 4 News Now weather alert day. So everybody needs to get into that fire safety type mode here. Normally, when we talk about days like this, we have all three of the ingredients on your screen here. It's usually hot, it's dry, it's windy. But what we talk about less often is that any combination of these factors, if say one or two are much stronger than the other, they could certainly, with the right background conditions, end up creating an environment that if a spark were to go off, wildfires would spread very, very quickly. And that is the scenario, albeit much more rare than our typical summer fire weather, what we're seeing right now here in the first weekend of fall. So for tomorrow, wind gusts 30 to 40 miles per hour. Our humidity is going to be extremely low for this time of the year, 10 to 20 percent. The other part, and the part that's going to be kind of strange, is that our highs for most of us will not break 70 degrees. So it is going to feel different outside. You may even need a light jacket or a windbreaker, but trust me, folks, it is going to be windy enough and dry enough to where we have got to be in that fire safety conscious mode here. Here's the map on your screen of that fire weather warning. You can see the vast majority of us here in the inland northwest under that warning. The folks that are not, especially when we look at the Idaho Palouse, well, that's because you got rain in the last 30 days. Things are looking a little bit better for you, but across much of eastern Washington and in the northern panhandle, we have had barely a drop over the past month. And that's the other reason why tomorrow is a weather alert day with these winds coming in. We'll go hour by hour in your Sunday forecast coming up. All right, Matt, thanks. A driver was going the wrong way down I-90 this morning and killed a Spokane Valley man. This happened near Sprague. We have the location of the collision here on your screen. According to Washington State Patrol, 89-year-old Lloyd O. Arbaugh from Moses Lake was driving east in the westbound lanes of I-90 just a little before 5 this morning. Arbaugh crashed into a car driven by 61-year-old Craig E. Ricker from Spokane Valley, who was pronounced dead at the scene. Debris from the crash hit another car driving on the interstate, but that third driver was uninjured. Arbaugh was taken to a local hospital for his injuries. Now WSP says charges against him are still under investigation. Well, one person is dead in Grant County this evening. According to the Grant County Sheriff's Office, happened in a car crash that involved only one vehicle on Road U Southeast. Marked on your screen is the location at Road 12 Southeast intersection. This is a developing story. We'll continue to update you once we learn more. In Rathdrum, Idaho, yesterday, two people were arrested for suspected drug trafficking. And this is according to the Rathdrum Police Department. An investigation found meth, drug paraphernalia, and more than $62,000 in cash in the car. The driver, Benjamin Barnhart of Spirit Lake, was arrested for trafficking drugs and possessing drug paraphernalia with intent to use. The passenger, Sarah Mallett from Newport, was arrested for possessing a controlled substance with intent to deliver and outstanding felony fugitive warrants out of Washington. And you can find updates on this story as it unfolds on our website, kxly.com. Well, two teenagers were arrested for a robbery at Pronto Plus in Spokane Valley Wednesday evening. According to the Spokane County Sheriff's Office, calls came in about a robbery in progress at the Pronto Plus around 5.30 p.m. The 17-year-old suspect told the employee he had a gun when they refused to sell him a vape. Deputies arrived on scene and tased the suspect when he refused to reveal whether or not he actually had a weapon. The second suspect, a 15-year-old male, was safely detained moments later. Both teens were charged with first-degree robbery and have been booked into the Spokane County Juvenile Justice Center. And taking a look down south where sheriffs and fire officers rescue four residents stranded with their dog. Incredible video from this dramatic moment. You can see when they pull the dog up to safety. And these are just some of the scary moments people have experienced from Hurricane Helene. At least 52 people have died in Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas, and Virginia. 
Now, the Biden administration has approved numerous federal emergency declarations to free up federal resources to help in the areas hard hit by the storm. Here's ABC's Faith Abube with the latest from Atlanta. Massive devastation in cities along Florida's Big Bend area. Taylor County taking a direct hit from Helene as it made landfall Thursday night as a powerful Category 4 hurricane. There's some real, real significant damage uh, in that part where the eye wall came onto land. To just see everything washed out on some of those homes. Uh, was was really catastrophic. Keaton Beach, north of Cedar Key, nearly obliterated. It's just sad in Keaton Beach. Nothing. That's it. A similar scene further south in Horseshoe Beach. Homes reduced to piles of rubble. Helene weakened as it moved inland, but still brought with it damaging winds and devastating floods. Rescuers carrying out dozens of swift water rescues in Atlanta. Some areas seeing 11 inches of rain. While you've seen firsthand the uh, destruction from fallen trees and down power lines and crumbled buildings in this part of the state. We're dealing with flash flooding and believe it or not, mudslides and avalanches up in the northern part of our state. In North Carolina, evacuations ordered downstream after water began overtopping Lake Lure Dam. And in Tennessee, patients and staff at this hospital had to be evacuated after moving to the roof amid rapidly rising floodwaters. President Biden has approved federal disaster declarations for several states impacted by Helene, including Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas, and Tennessee, freeing up federal resources. We're moving medical resources. We're moving uh, search and rescue teams into those critical areas. Um, we've got generators moving to help uh, with the power issues. More than 4 million customers lost power during Helene. Crews now hard at work across 10 states working to restore power to everyone. Faith Abube, ABC News, Atlanta. Ooh, scary stuff. Well, coming up in this special edition of 4 News Now, we'll break down important issues discussed at the Attorney General debate. How the practices of Washington's future Attorney General could impact you and your neighborhood. Plus, Parents in Moses Lake may need to find another way to get their child to school on Monday. School bus driver shortages may temporarily cancel certain bus routes. More details still ahead. And we were in the 80s today. It felt like summer, but a cold front is moving across the inland northwest right now. And tomorrow is going to be a much different story. We will show you the big cool down and the fire dangers that come along with it. Plus some other things that are be coming along for the ride with those winds coming up. Connect with 4 News Now on KXLY+. Plus. At 4 News Now, we believe you should expect more from local news. Our team is committed to a community conversation and bringing you information you need when and where you need it. Numerica believes in and supports that mission. Are you a daredevil who drives on empty to see if you can make it? At Numerica, you'll find money answers for you and only you. Learn more at numericacu.com. So, boss man, what are we doing today? Oh, just annual maintenance. Annual maintenance? Uh, yeah, the yearly tune-up to keep the heating and cooling stuff running. Wait, you do get tune-ups on your HVAC equipment, right? Uh, totally unrelated, but can you come by my house after this and maybe check out my system? Whatever you need to do this fall, AutoNation has your back. Delivering food, an entire team, or a very special delivery. We have an unmatched selection of vehicles at great savings. See us at AutoNation Toyota and get 1.99% financing on a new Toyota Tundra or a Tundra 1794 edition up to $5,500 off. Visit AutoNation Toyota today. What drives you drives us.
the best sound to start your day with, is it? Your next decision should be to call Precision. Our professionally trained technicians are here to provide you with award-winning service every time. Our trucks are rolling warehouses, so we can get you back up and running fast. Need a new door? We do that too. And right now, get a new garage door, Wi-Fi opener, and remote combo installed for as low as $34 per month and up to $500 in cashback savings. Call or book online today. Welcome back. We always knew that this was going to be a tale of two halves this weekend, but certainly that changeover looks like it is going to be fairly dramatic around the inland northwest. Our radar actually picking up kind of the bottoms of some of these thick clouds running along with this cold front. You may see a sprinkle up in the high mountains, but I'm not expecting anything to work its way down to the valleys. A little bit too warm and too dry for today. And dry air, definitely something we're going to continue to deal with for tomorrow. It's just going to be a lot cooler. So around 2 a.m., cloud cover as this passes this front over Spokane. And then the winds really start picking up here, coming through the gaps in the Cascades as that cooler air rushes in for the start of the day. So it'll already be noticeably windy in many areas or definitely breezier than it was today as you're getting up in the morning and getting your Sunday started. As we get into the afternoon and the peak of those winds, we will likely see some blowing dust around eastern Washington. Not going to be as intense of blowing dust as what we saw with those thunderstorms on Wednesday, but it will be likely be enough in some cases to where we may see some blowing dust advisories. We may see some limited visibility on some of those highways across the Columbia Basin, especially where you see these gusts in that 30 to 40 mile an hour range from Douglas County all the way to the I-90 corridor from Moses Lake, Ritzville, and then on into Spokane around Whitman County as well and the approaches to the LC Valley here. So it's going to be kind of that, once again, that kind of two, three, four o'clock time frame where those gusts will likely be the, well, the gustiest, but it'll still be fairly windy throughout the entirety of the day. The other part of the wildfire threat and why tomorrow is a 4 News Now weather alert day is the humidity. Yes, it's cool, but man, the humidity plays a huge factor in how fast things spread. And well, you take a look at here from that kind of one o'clock to five o'clock time frame. This would be pretty common in the middle of the summer on a hot 90 something degree day where our relative humidities are dropping below 20%. But we're doing this with just a couple of days left to go in the month of September. So pretty unusual. Unusual days mean we do unusual things like talking about fire weather at this point in the year. So likely going to see some dusty skies. Everybody just be careful out there. That way we can get through this and let this wind pass. Only mid 60s for highs. So yeah, windbreaker or a light jacket. Definitely uh, could be in order if you got used to the warmer weather today. A couple spots will hit 70 Grand Coulee and Lewiston. Now, gardeners, listen up here because it's going to get cold right after this through the overnight. Sunday night into Monday morning, we've got a freeze watch from Republic to Bonners Ferry, south into the St. Mary's area, all the way south into places like Orofino. And you can see highlighted here, notice these temperatures very close to freezing. 33 we have right now for Sandpoint and St. Mary's. Colville, a hard freeze in the upper 20s. So it's time to think about, hey, what am I gonna do to start covering up the garden, covering up those plants in those areas? And around Spokane and Coeur d'Alene as well, we're gonna be right on the edge of frost. So a lot of things that we gotta start thinking about here in a short, short time frame. Here's your seven day forecast and things get much more comfortable and calm. It'll be a cool sunny day on Monday. Tuesday, we start warming up a little bit again. The conditions continue, though, to stay dry. We need this rain desperately. My optimism is growing that we'll at least have a chance coming up here on this coming Friday. But we still have plenty of time for things to change between now and then. So fingers crossed because we need a couple of good rainstorms to help put out fire season for good. And until then, we may end up with more days like we're going to see tomorrow.
All right, Matt, thanks. An update for those living near Sam Point. All evacuations have been lifted for a fire that was burning on the north side of Upper Pack River Road. Now, the Goosemas fire still burning between Big Goosemas Road and Danville in Ferry County started on Wednesdays, burned over 1,700 acres. Level 3 Go Now evacuations are in place for people along 4th of July Creek Road. People in the town of Danville and the area north of Big Goosemas Road need to be set to leave at a moment's notice. And here's a picture posted by the Northeast Washington Fire Information Facebook page. It shows two dozen dozers working on creating a barrier so that this fire doesn't spread. There are about 251 people working on this, and the fire is currently 0% contained. And just in the newsroom, firefighters in Grant County put out a fire on a train not more than 15 minutes ago. And this all happened at Baird Springs Road northwest, about eight miles west of Quincy. All crew members did make it off the train safely. In an effort to manage the spread of chronic wasting disease among animals in our region, Washington Fish and Wildlife has banned the feeding of deer, elk, and moose in and around Spokane County. CWD can kill those animals, and because it's spread through bodily fluids and contact, the department does not want the animals gathered together. The emergency ruling makes it an infraction to feed or lure elk, deer, or moose in the county, as you can see on this map. Earlier this year, a deer was found in North Spokane County that tested positive for CWD. Well, still ahead, we'll take a deep dive into the race for Washington Attorney General and the race for the White House. When we come back, Vice President Kamala Harris's visit to the southern border. Plus, NASA and SpaceX send astronauts to the International Space Station on the Crew-9 mission. We'll tell you the goal of this launch coming up right after this. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. Starting at $3.99, you can get one, make it a double, or go for three delicious patties. Go as big as you want with my bonus Jack combo starting at $3.99. Now you can say you're loving it and actually mean it. At Jack, every bite's a big deal. Welcome to Jack in the Box. There are trucks, and then there's the GMC Sierra. Available with the connected driving experience. And the world's first six-function multi-pro tailgate. GMC Sierra. It's the truck. Get 0% APR on select 2024 Sierra 1500 models. That's over 6400 total value. Plus no monthly payments for 90 days. See your local GMC dealer. I started taking care of my mom about five months ago. She has dementia and then being newly diagnosed with lung cancer, my mom was unable to stay in her home. Balancing work and caregiving has been a struggle. Knowing that wall cares will be available relieves a lot of stress. Having access to those funds would have helped so much financially and mentally because life is unpredictable. Wall cares moves with you even if you move out of Washington. I'm Katherine Forner, and we love our own backyard so much, we built all of this. With hardwood decking and basalite pavers. And we just finished this deck for one of our best customers. With timber tech decking and fortress railing. And we get everything we need from PAR. With Shauna's help. Everything from design to delivery. What would we do without you? PAR, your total home building source since 1930. Go where the builders go. What are you going to once in a while, we all want to go wild. We just need a little help. Meet a little help. The 2024 Ford Bronco Sport Wild Edition goes over any terrain so you can go all out. Get a wild deal on a Bronco Sport today. Lease a Bronco Sport Wild Edition for just $369 a month for 36 months. Only at your local Ford dealer. Why settle for the same old breakfast sandwich? For $2.99, you can have my buttery sourdough loaded with crispy bacon, eggs, and melty cheese. Come on, we fought the Revolutionary War so we don't have to eat stale English muffins. We won, by the way. At Jack, every bite's a big deal. Welcome to Jack in the Box. 4 News Now is brought to you by End the Violence. Welcome back. The time is 9.02. In a debate just over a week ago, the two candidates battling for Washington's Attorney General faced off once again ahead of November's election. Our Hunter Bertram brings us the issues discussed that could affect you and your neighborhood. 
Yeah, hey there. Let's discuss the attorney general race here in Washington. The candidates for this election are Democrat Nick Brown and Republican Pete Serrano. During the TVW debate held by the Washington State Debate Coalition, they discussed many topics, but let's focus on the key issues of this race. First, they debated the state's drug crisis. I want to make sure that we're focusing our resources first and foremost on the people bringing drugs into our community. We need to make sure that we're also getting to people's root addictions and providing the treatment and services for them as well. Serrano, Brown's opponent, agreed to focus on providing more treatment and services, but emphasized the need for state intervention to ensure drug offenders receive the necessary treatment. We need to hold these folks accountable throughout the system and make sure they're actually seeking treatment. Serrano also mentioned in Pasco, where he serves as mayor, he has seen how investment in the local jurisdiction has made his city safer and plans to implement similar practices. Another major point of discussion in this race is Washington's gun control. Serrano actively suing the state's high-capacity magazine ban, which is expected to be heard by the Washington Supreme Court this fall. When I look at the large-capacity magazines and the assault weapons bans, we had a lot of the impacted communities who are coming to the gun shops looking for safety and protection. We cannot ban protection in Washington. Brown expressing complete disagreement following Serrano's statement. I believe as a state, we need to continue to advance gun safety measures here in Washington because that has results and saves lives. Brown also cited not just crimes are committed by firearms, but also suicide deaths, which is Washington's leading cause of death by a firearm, according to the Washington State Department of Health. And you may wonder what the role of the AG plays in your life. Well, the AG defends the state and elected officials in lawsuits and represents public interest by state law. Therefore, Brown's and Serrano's platforms could influence policies and practices that affect your family and neighbors' well-being and rights. In studio, Hunter Bertram, 4 News Now. All right, Hunter, thanks. In the race for the White House, Vice President Kamala Harris visited the southern border yesterday. This was her first since becoming the Democratic nominee. The trip comes as former President Donald Trump has been leading with the edge in the polls on the issue of immigration. ABC's Johnny Fernandez has the latest. Vice President Kamala Harris made her first trip to the southern border in more than three years on Friday. Harris stopping in Arizona and touring the Mexican border with patrol agents. Following the tour, the vice president spoke to supporters in Douglas, Arizona. There are consequential issues at stake in this election. And one is the security of our border. Harris promising if she is elected, she will add 1,500 more border agents and officers, crack down on fentanyl smuggling and human trafficking, and surge resources to the border. But a Fox News poll shows more voters in Arizona say they trust former President Trump on the issue. At a town hall in Michigan, Trump mocking Harris's border visit. Why doesn't she, why didn't she do it four years ago almost? And I say that, you know, she's on the border today, try and justify. This comes as the latest numbers from Customs and Border Protection show encounters at the southern border are down compared to last year, after the Biden administration imposed new asylum restrictions. Johnny Fernandez, ABC News, New York. And we want to remind you that the vice presidential candidates J.D. Vance and Tim Walls will go head to head on Tuesday in their only debate before the general election. You can watch it right here on ABC with coverage beginning at 5 o'clock. Well, check this out. A piece of American history could belong to you. A rare copy of the United States Constitution now on the auction block. It's a printed original from 1787, one of the first copies of the U.S. Constitution that Congress sent to the 13 colonies for ratification. This copy is only the ninth of its kind known to still exist. Brunk Auction said the copy being auctioned is folded and lightly stained, but in good condition. The opening bid is $1 million, but auctioneers think it will sell for millions. Maybe if we all pool our money together. Stick around. 4 News Now. We'll be right back. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app.
When it's time to choose the right products for your new kitchen or bathroom, Ferguson Showroom Consultants are here to help. With the expertise to navigate even the most complex projects, our team will advise you on the latest products and innovative new features. We'll take care of the details so you can make the best choices for your home. At Ferguson, your project is our priority. Visit your local Ferguson Bath Kitchen and Lighting Gallery to shop the best selection of brands like Thermador. I kind of get it now. The massaging seats in this Mercedes are sublime. Told you. I needs me one of these. I need one for each day of the week to match my shoes. Well, at the rate that Northern Quest is giving them away, it's, oh. Need the script? It doesn't matter. Play daily to win a brand new Mercedes-Benz on September 28th, only at Northern Quest. When you need inspiration, it's worth shopping Fred Meyer. For thousands of appetizing ingredients that inspire countless mouth-watering meals. And low prices that add up to big savings, like over $600 in digital coupons each week. And up to $1 off per gallon at the pump. So you can get big flavors and big savings. Fred Meyer, fresh for everyone. Which is better, Honda or Toyota? Well, the Honda Accord and CRV both made the Car and Driver 10 Best list. Camry and RAV4 did not. In fact, when it comes to the 10 Best, no one comes close to Honda, the only company to make every single 10 Best list. That means Honda's not just better, it's the best. And right now, well-qualified buyers can get the Honda CRV with 2.9% APR financing. So for big deals on America's best brand, see your Inland Northwest Honda dealer. Tuesday night, watch the vice presidential debate live on ABC. Well, here's a qu quick look at the send-off for SpaceX astronauts who departed on the Crew-9 mission this morning. NASA plans to use the SpaceX capsule to bring home the crew of Boeing Starliner from the International Space Station. ABC's Gio Benitez reports. And liftoff. This morning, NASA and SpaceX gearing up for liftoff to launch the critical mission that will eventually bring two astronauts back to Earth from the International Space Station. All of our missions have unique challenges, and uh, this one, I think, will be memorable for a lot of us. Astronauts Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams flew to the ISS aboard Boeing's troubled Starliner back in June, their eight-day mission turning into eight months. The spacecraft suffering a series of helium leaks and thruster problems, NASA deciding it was ultimately too risky to fly them home. The two now returning in February on SpaceX's Crew Dragon. Safety has been our top priority from the get-go, so we treat each one with the same level of safety evaluation and concerns, which is really rigorous. Certainly the first time flying in a SpaceX vehicle. The Crew Dragon spacecraft was set to carry four astronauts to the ISS for a routine science mission. Now the capsule is going up with two empty seats, now reserved for Butch and Sonny's return. NASA also releasing these images of the emergency seating built on the space station to put on a Crew Dragon if the astronauts have to evacuate from the space station if there is a catastrophic event or an extreme medical emergency. I'll uh, just say that the International Space Station is ready um, and excited to receive the vehicle and its crew. We um, are looking forward to the docking. The best way to not get stranded in space is to not go. Now, we all might wish we could sometimes take a rocket ship to work to avoid the morning commute traffic, but the city of Spokane is looking to find new opportunities along Division to improve transit experiences for those who are driving, walking, or taking the bus. Two major traffic projects have the potential to change the flow of Division Street over the next few years. These include the North Spokane Corridor and Spokane Transit's Bus Rapid Transit System. Project planners are working to study the area now for transit-oriented development. Now here's a look at the zone in question. From Riverside to up past Shiloh Hills, specific zoning improvements are still being determined, but they could help the Division area become easier to navigate for those without vehicles. The majority of the time I'm on a bike, so I have to ride on the sidewalk where I get hit by cars because there's nowhere for us to ride on the asphalt where we're supposed to ride, so it makes it tough. The goal of this transit-oriented development is to pinpoint what kind of changes people could help get where they need to be safely.
Well, families in Moses Lake may have to find another way to get their kids to school. A bus driver shortage means the district may have to temporarily cancel certain bus routes. So here's what we know so far. According to a Facebook post from the Moses Lake School District, each morning, parents will be notified before 5.30 a.m. as to whether or not their child's bus route has been canceled. These cancellations will impact both the morning and afternoon routes, but buses for special education will not be affected. The district is currently looking for more bus drivers and substitutes. Cheney Public Schools is placing a $72 million bond on the November ballot after it failed to meet the 60% supermajority threshold during the February elections. The bond will cost taxpayers about $45 per $100,000 of assessed property value. Meaning, if you have a home that's valued at $400,000, you'd be paying about $180 a year in taxes for this bond. If passed, the money will fund safety improvements at the pickup and drop-off locations at Salnave and Windsor Elementary Schools. It would also pay to improve those schools' kitchen spaces, which are quite small. At Salnave's Kitchen, staff can't even prepare all the food in there. And in fact, a majority of it has to come from the district's office. Money from the bond would expand this space. A majority of it, though, would fund construction for a new elementary school in Airway Heights, with the current one being at 121% capacity. Our Airway Heights students are bused across our school district to other elementary schools. And the goal of that building in Airway Heights is so that students go to their home school. For information on what else this bond would fund, you can visit our website at kxly.com. Well, tomorrow is your last chance to save some money and get some new things for your kids at the Just Between Friends sale at the Spokane Fair and Expo Center. You can expect to save 50 to 90% on everything that growing kids need. That's including clothing, toys, shoes, and more. All of these items have been inspected for safety and quality. It's open at 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Sunday. You just need $5 cash for admission. And there's still more to come on this special edition of 4 News Now. We'll have that for you right after this break. Oh, after this break, excuse me, I sat down with the lead actress from Funny Girl opening downtown next week. Why she says she this show still touches many hearts. And on this week's Air Forward Adventure, we're soaring above one spot south of Highway 195. Catch a bird's eye view of Slavin Conservation Area after this break. And we've got lots of changes to talk about in your first alert forecast. An alert for fire danger tomorrow, and then some freezing conditions in parts of the inland northwest right after that. We're ending September with a flourish after this. Livestream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. Huddle up for big wins at Spokane Tribe Resort and Casino. We're kicking off September with your chance to win up to $5,000 cash every Saturday. 56 Sun Club members will score a touchdown with a chance to win big. Elevate your game at Spokane Tribe Resort and Casino. Whatever you need to do this fall, we've got your back. AutoNation Chevy has an unmatched selection with great savings. Take advantage of 1.9% financing on your favorite new 2024 Chevys. Visit AutoNation Chevy today. What's all this? You said it was a recovery day. I got my yoga mat, foam roller, electrolytes, and protein bars. The whole setup. <laughs> Refrigerant recovery, Ben. We're recovering the refrigerant to fix the heat pump. Oh, right. I knew that. Want a protein bar? Get a free heat pump with every furnace purchase at Bill's Heating and AC while supplies last. Call now. Electrolyte? Ben, take the robe off. I'm Lori Matsukawa. Washington's general election is Tuesday, November 5th. If you haven't registered to vote yet, there's still time to make your voice heard. Register in person at a county elections office or voting center until 8 p.m. Election Day, November 5th. Find voting center locations at votewa.gov. That's V-O-T-E-W-A dot G-O-V. Secure your vote. Register today. Monday, from Market Street to the Washington Bridge and the Cheney Spokane Road, what's the status of construction projects that slowed you down all summer? And where are new detours about to start? Watch our live coverage Monday on Good Morning Northwest. It's crunch time for the 4 News Now sports team. High school and college football season. Covering the kids you know and the teams you love. If you aren't paying attention to what's happening on the Palouse right now, it might be time to do so. 
local players, local fans, inspirational athletes, and in-depth analysis. For Washington State, this means a lot more than that. Plus, we'll let you in on the action. Telling us which games you want us to cover. Catch the 4 News Now sports team every night. Elevate your game at Spokane Tribe Resort and Casino. Our expanded gaming floor now features over 900 of your favorite slots. Plus all new table games. Only at Spokane Tribe Resort and Casino. You just win here. Live from downtown Spokane, this is 4 News Now Special Edition. Thanks for joining us on this special edition of 4 News Now. The time is 9.18. Now this week, it may be time to swap out your t-shirt and shorts for a sweater, but ironically, that's coming with fire danger. Meteorologist Matt Gray joins us to explain. And you know, Rob, it, we don't usually talk about us cooling down into the 60s and fire danger at the same, uh, in the same breath. Usually that happens before things cool off. Well, that just doesn't. That's just not the case this time. So for News Now Weather Alert Day tomorrow, we've got fire weather warnings up across a huge swath here of the inland northwest. Spokane, Coeur d'Alene, all the way north to Bonners Ferry, all the way south through the Washington Palouse and into the foothills of the Blue Mountains, all the way down to the Tri-Cities and all the way up through the Okanagan River to the border crossing there. So there's a huge amount of you folks watching where we have got to be in that summertime mode, that fire weather alertness here on this first weekend of fall. Here's the situation. We've got a cold front moving through right now. You're probably noticing some of the high cloud cover if you take a peek outside here in central Washington. And behind that comes much cooler air. But here is the catch and why we are looking at this, uh, this situation here. And that is that it is much drier air as well. You can see this kind of brown smudge here moving in behind the moisture from the clouds that are moving at, right around the uh, leading edge of the front there. So we're talking about some extremely dry air that's gonna settle in to where, yes, our temperatures will be in the 60s, but this air is gonna be so dry that we will still have summertime afternoon humidities between about one and five o'clock. There are gonna be many areas with relative humidities under 20%. We talk about this a lot during the summertime with fire weather and fire threats, is that is a magic number. You get below that 20% and things, well, they get a little bit more active when a fire starts. Plus, you have the winds that are coming along with this as well as that cool air rushes in after today, we were in the 80s. So all that combines for a day where we just need to pay a little bit more attention, have a little bit of extra vigilance, and be a little bit extra more, uh, or I guess be more careful rather, so that we can get through this. And hopefully this can be the last time we talk about fire weather this year. The rest of your forecast, and if we will get some rain to help cool this off, coming up. All right, Matt, thanks. Well, tomorrow's weather alert day, great time for you to download the 4 News Now mobile app. You'll get push notifications and alerts so you can stay informed on the go. You can download it for free in the App Store. Well, a heads up to drivers in Ponderay County. You may need to anticipate some delays on your Monday commute. These delays will happen on Lost Creek Bridge on State Route 20, which is about five miles south of Tiger. WashDOT will be making repairs to the bridge, so lanes will be closed and a temporary traffic signal will be placed at each end starting at 10 a.m. The construction is expected to go until Friday, October 11th. In Spokane Valley, a man was hit by a car in front of a Circle K gas station last night. It happened near the corner of North Pines and East Valleyway, about two blocks north of Sprague. The man was taken to the hospital with serious injuries but did not survive. The crash is still under investigation and we're keeping an eye out for any new information and we'll update you as soon as it becomes available. 29 City of Spokane employees received notice that they could be laid off. Mayor Lisa Brown's office saying that these are not official terminations, but advance notice that the positions may be eliminated. The city says there are multiple factors that will determine if these people get laid off. And that includes the outcome of union negotiations if the proposed community safety sales tax is approved and the city's final budget, which is set to be approved by the city council at the end of the year. Well, next week, Broadway's Funny Girls coming to Spokane's first interstate center for the arts. And I had the chance to sit down with lead actress Hannah Shankman, chat about playing the iconic role Fanny Bryce. She says she thinks this character can still connect with modern audiences.
the message is still so necessary right now. You know, it's a lot about female empowerment, but it's also just about self-love and uh, self-preservation, I think. The show will begin its run at Spokane First Interstate Center for the Arts Tuesday, October 1st. Performances will continue through Sunday, October 6th. And you can watch the full interview and get your tickets on KXLY.com. I'll see you there. The Hub Sports Center building two brand new turf fields and it's fundraising to add more to its outdoor expansion project. The Hub says an anonymous donor gave them $3 million to buy the land next to its indoor sports complex. Now it's looking to fundraise $3 million more to complete the project, which will include a walking path and lights so the turf fields can be used year round. And we're actively developing um, that land into to two fields right now. We'll look to add another two fields in the future. Uh, but, but again, it expands our capacity to serve and, and provide more opportunities for more kids to play and participate. The turf fields open later this fall, and the hub's goal is to finish fundraising by the end of the year. Champlin says once the fundraising for this project is finished, they'll kick off phase three, which includes pickleball courts and a playground. Washington State and Boise State are in the middle of a tough battle in Idaho. Both teams want to show they can be a contender for the postseason. And the Cougs need to win tonight if the college football playoffs can even be the smallest thought in their minds. We're checking in on the Cougs coming up in sports. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. A luxury Audi experience doesn't start when you're driving or even when you first get behind the wheel. It starts here at Audi Spokane, where you can take advantage of a new 2024 Audi Q5 e Quattro for only $539 a month. That's an Audi Q5 $539 a month. Start your luxury journey now at Audi Spokane, an Auto Nation company. I want you to know where I stand on abortion. Where Dave Reichert stands is clear. He spent over a decade working to take away abortion rights. In Congress, Reichert repeatedly voted for a national abortion ban and against exceptions, and time after time voted to defund Planned Parenthood. Now, Reichert says as governor, he'll work toward unraveling protections for abortion access here. Reichert is really wrong for Washington. Custom is more than choosing from a few fabric options. With True Custom Upholstery by Bassett, you get control over almost every detail so you can design a sofa that's perfect for you. From the style of the arms and legs to the cushion and pillow shape. Perfect style, perfect comfort, created for you. Get 30% off Bassett Custom Upholstery at the Tin Roof for a limited time only. Welcome to Avanta Dental, where we treat you like family, because you deserve the best. At Avanta Dental, we pride ourselves on providing top-notch care. With our team of expert dentists and truly state-of-the-art technology, it's no wonder why we're the highest rated office in Washington State. Avanta Dental, where your smile is our priority. Book your appointment today. Call us today at 425-0088 or come visit us in Liberty Lake. There are trucks, and then there's the GMC Sierra. Available with the connected driving experience. And the world's first six-function multi-pro tailgate. GMC Sierra. It's the truck. Get 0% APR on select 2024 Sierra 1500 models. That's over 6,400 total value. Plus no monthly payments for 90 days. ShopDaveSmith.com. Welcome back. Time's 926. The weather is still nice enough to get outside, maybe go for a hike before it gets too cold. In this week's Air Force Adventure, we're soaring above one spot south of Highway 195 in Spokane County, filled with beautiful trails and amazing views. Let's go for a ride on the Air Force drone over the Slavin Conservation Area. This is a uh, James T. Slavin Conservation Area. Well, some days it's really, really, really cool. It's really nice. You can go for long, 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 long walks. 
wander off and then turn left or right and then left or right or left or right, you know, and eventually I end up, you know, so I get tired of walking, so I start looking for a way to get back. But this is the time to go. Quite, 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 quite gorgeous. Awesome. Yeah, it was perfect out there. Yeah. Nice to be cool. back out, have the weather to be able to do so. Great place to walk the dog and people to come walk their horses and it's a good time to come spend with your mom, catch up, see what's going on. <laughs> Beautiful. I think it's one of the one of the better kept secrets of the area, but it's nice to see folks come out here and take advantage of it and you always seem to run across real nice people out here. There's up and down, there's flat, there's a little bit of everything to choose from. If you don't like that path, you can find another one. It's neat they kept it a preserve for everybody in the region to enjoy. Wow, well, beautiful there. Now time for your forecast for uh, forecast focus. Goodness, I'm sorry, everybody, having some issues talking correctly this evening. Here's the kind of factor that we haven't really talked about yet when it comes to how we have a day in the 60s tomorrow, and we're talking about wildfire danger. It's the amount of rain, or rather the lack of rain, that we've seen in many parts of the inland northwest. We had a big storm here in early September, dumped a lot of rain over the Palouse and into north central Idaho. But where did it miss? Well, we got a little in Sandpoint, but that didn't really make up for the drier months beforehand. We basically got nothing in Spokane and nothing across the Columbia Basin out of that storm from the last 30 days. And so things have dried out significantly. We've got severe drought in many parts of the inland northwest. It's one of the reasons why there was so much blowing dust with those nasty storms on Wednesday, because it's pretty busy out in the fields right now, and it is bone dry out there. Look at Spokane in particular, only four one hundredths of an inch this month, and we are almost done with the month of September. So we are maybe looking at one of the 10 driest months on record by the time it is all wrapped up and done here on Monday with rain looking highly unlikely in the forecast. And then we'll just hope that we start to see a fire season ending event in October. Now to give you some perspective, you look across the other side of the country and they are dealing with the exact opposite problem. In the mountains of Western North Carolina, they basically just had from Hurricane Helene their uh, what some people are calling their Hurricane Katrina. 45 inches of rain in the past three days in some places. It is uh, some truly heartbreaking and devastating uh, things to see, unfortunately, there. So hearts going out to folks, if you know anybody over there in Western North Carolina. But that's more than we've had in over three years here in the inland Northwest. Very different climates, and that's why we talk about these wildfire conditions so often. Look, with one spark, any combination of these conditions, hot, dry, windy, could all influence or increase how fast a wildfire spreads, make things more dangerous. Well, we're not going to have the heat tomorrow, but we're going to have the wind, 30, 40 mile an hour gusts, especially across eastern Washington, and that humidity that we mentioned earlier, only 10 to 20 percent with extremely dry and cool air coming in behind this cold front tonight. Windiest weather going to be during the afternoon, sustained around Spokane and Coeur d'Alene about ooh, 20 to 25 miles per hour. And yes, yeah, so we'll see those gusts into the 30s and perhaps even close to 40 miles an hour around places like the West Plains. So during that afternoon, lowest humidity, highest winds, just like we say during the summertime, Everybody just use that little bit of extra caution and we'll be able to get through this. Another thing we're going to see, limited visibility. There will be more blowing dust, not as bad as Wednesday, but likely longer duration. It'll definitely be looking fairly uh, tan and hazy on the horizon for a good portion of your Sunday. And then it's time to cover the plants. A freeze watch in effect from north central Idaho into the Idaho Panhandle and in northeastern Washington. Spokane and Coeur d'Alene not in that freeze watch, but with lows in the upper 30s for Sunday night, they're going to be very, very close to the potential for some frost. So if you've got some sensitive plants, probably worthwhile to cover them for that night just in case. And of course, we'll have that update for you tomorrow on 4 News Now as we get closer to that low temperature forecast. Otherwise, some beautiful weather here as we end September, start October. 
Hopefully, this number will start to increase here as we uh, continue to refine the forecast for Friday. But we desperately need some rain, Rob. All right, Matt, thanks. Well, if the cooler temperatures aren't enough of a sign that summer is officially over, maybe this will do it for you. The Park Bench Cafe in Manitou Park will be closing for the year after this weekend. The cafe in Manitou Park will be open tomorrow for the last day from 10 a.m. to 6. We'll be right back with sports. Livestream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. Bigger, brighter, and better than ever. Check in on the new Spokane Tribe Resort and Casino. We've just completed a major expansion, adding more amenities to elevate your guest experience to new heights. So, what are you waiting for? For those ready to answer adventure's highest calling, we've built our most capable Subaru yet. Sure-footed symmetrical all-wheel drive, 9.5 inches of ground clearance, plus 97% of Outback vehicles sold in the last 10 years are still on the road today. The 2025 Subaru Outback Wilderness. Adventure elevated. Drive a new 2025 Subaru Outback with 2.9% financing for 72 months at AutoNation Subaru. Not the best sound to start your day with, is it? Your next decision should be to call Precision. Our professionally trained technicians are here to provide you with award-winning service every time. Our trucks are rolling warehouses, so we can get you back up and running fast. Need a new door? We do that too. And right now, get a new garage door, Wi-Fi opener, and remote combo installed for as low as $34 per month and up to $500 in cashback savings. Call or book online today. Free, fair, and secure elections are the backbone of our democracy. Whether it's an election to choose our state's next leaders or to decide on a local measure, election officials work tirelessly to ensure every eligible voter's voice is heard. Regular integrity checks against federal and state databases ensure Washington's voter roll is clean and accurate. Visit votewa.gov today to check your voter registration and get ready to vote. That's V-O-T-E-W-A dot G-O-V. See Hawks Lions on ABC? Time for a little inspiration. Hang on. <gasps> Nothing more inspirational than the rise of the reigning NFC North champs. The pride of Motown. Lion-hearted silver crush, baby. Taking on DK and the new legion of... Have I been talking to myself the whole time? Decaf. Maybe switch to decaf. Elevate your game day at Caesar Sportsbook, located inside Spokane Tribe Resort and Casino. The area's largest sportsbook is your VIP seat on the 50-yard line with massive HD screens and live betting. Only at Spokane Tribe Resort and Casino. You just win here. It's a new season of Live with Kelly and Mark. Weekdays at 9 a.m. <laughs> Washington State is right in the thick of their game against Boise State in Idaho tonight. Here's where we aren't surprised. Boise running back Ashton Genty using his legs. Washington State quarterback John Matier also using his legs. Genty had a 72-yard rushing touchdown, and Matier had a 52-yard run to set up for a touchdown pass all under four minutes of the first quarter. The initial vibe felt like this would be a high-scoring shootout, but since then, things have mellowed out offensively, and if Washington State has any chance of taking this one away, their tackling needs to lock down the run game, and their O-line needs to protect Matier. Boise State is up two touchdowns at last check. They're going into the fourth quarter, down 14 points. It's familiar territory to last week's nail-biter against San Jose State. Of course, we'll keep you updated on our social media and our website, kxoy.com. Today marked the start of conference play for Eastern Washington and Montana. It's an unofficial turning point in the season and a chance for the Eagles to change their trajectory for the better. After winning their home opener, they've lost the last three games and the Grizz are no easy task. And they're back to the red tonight, though. We're picking things up in the first quarter. It's the Grizz driving down the field. Logan Fife drops it into Eric Barker 
for the touchdown. The Grizzlies will then lead by three after this. It'll be 10 to seven, and the Eagles are going to get the chance to answer. QB Keikoa Vicerus finds his top target, Efton Chisholm the third in the back of the end zone, and the Eagles would now take the lead. Both teams traded scores for most of the first half. It's Montana's turn again. Fife, he sees daylight and takes off there. That sets up the Grizz in the red zone, and then the very next play, Fife connects with Barkers once again. The Grizzlies are dominant until the fourth quarter where Eastern actually able to put up 28 points. And the final score tonight was 52 to 49, a three point game and a wild finish in Cheney. Eastern though will be back on the road headed to Sacramento State next Saturday at six o'clock. And Idaho took a business trip down to California today to take on the Aggies. Both teams three and one on the season before kickoff. This is another seven o'clock kick. So here's the most recent score heading into the fourth quarter as well. The fourth ranked Vandals falling behind the 14th ranked Aggies. It's their third ranked team Idaho facing but probably their toughest so far. We got our first look at the new Gonzaga team. The Zags lost several veterans, including four of their five starters from last season. Who will fit into which position is what head coach Lisa Fortier is working to figure out. In fifth year, Yvonne Ejim says this is the biggest changeup in the roster she's experienced so far, but she's already got a game plan on how to help the new girls along. Really trying to lean on like the other leaders on our team, so like the Esthers, the Mouts, the Taylors, um, and having trust in these new girls that are coming in too. Like they're my teammates. Like I'm not here to kind of drag them along. I'm here to walk with them. So I think having that outlook on them uh, or outlook on this season and this team is very helpful in that sense. And honestly, taking a little bit what I've learned from the leaders in my past years. Gonzaga is hosting FanFest on October 12th, and the season opener is against College of Idaho on November 1st. Live in studio, Sydney Berger for News Now Sports, and we'll be right back. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. Luxurious Karistan flooring. The flooring you need to live beautifully. With the National Karistan Month Savings with Style event, you'll receive free carpet cushion with purchase of Karistan carpet or a free Karistan area rug with purchase of Karistan hard surface flooring. Live beautifully, save beautifully with Karistan at Sandpoint Furniture Carpet One Floor and Home. There are trucks and then there's the GMC Sierra available with the connected driving experience and the world's first six function multi-pro tailgate. GMC Sierra. It's the truck. Get 0% APR on select 2024 Sierra 1500 models. That's over 6400 total value. Plus no monthly payments for 90 days. ShopDaveSmith.com Discover fall in Coeur d'Alene. Experience the hidden treasure of autumn in our serene lakeside town. As the lively energy of summer subsides, the town embraces the tranquility of fall. Guests can unwind and find solace by the glistening lake. See for yourself why fall is Coeur d'Alene's best kept secret. Book your fall foliage lake cruise overnight package now and make memories that will warm your heart for years to come. When you have moderate to severe eczema, it's okay to show off. With Dupixin, show off your clearer skin and less itch. Because you have plenty of reasons to show off your skin. With Dupixin, the number one prescribed biologic by dermatologists and allergists, you can stay ahead of your eczema. It helps block a key source of inflammation inside the body that can cause eczema to help heal your skin from within. Many adults saw 90% clearer skin. Some even achieved long-lasting clearer skin and fast itch relief after first dose. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. Show off to the world. Ask your eczema specialist about Dupixit. Hey, Kooks just scored again. They're within a possession. So again, stay up to date on our socials and website for the final score.